Let's talk some toys in here. <laughs> hey, what's up, everybody? Today is the man-child. All right, so today I'm going to go over the uh, NECA Gargoyles Lexington figure. It was part of the Disney animated series going back into the 90s, the Gargoyles show, which is pretty cool and still holds up. There's uh, some episodes on YouTube. You're not familiar with them. I rewatched some of them because I don't really remember all of them. They're really cool. Um, but yeah, so ne NECA put out... I'd say just about all the Gargoyles now, at least the main clan. I reviewed a few of them. I have, I'd say most of them, not all of them. But, um, yeah, I was excited to see Lexington finally, just because he's green. He has a different style, like the flying squirrel-type wings, instead of them big bat wings like the other Gargoyles have, which is cool. But it makes them really big, and they're shelf hoggers, you want to say, where he's a lot smaller. And here's just a quick look at all the images in the back of the box. Pretty much just have an image of the figure himself. And a layout of different um, poses and setups or accessories that he comes with and will be using. And now here's a close-up of the bio. You want to pause and read that. And I think the bio is all the same on all the NECA Gargoyle figures on the back of the boxes. And now dropping down, here's an image of all the Gargoyle figures that NECA has out at this time. Okay, so flipping back to the cover. Let's open it up. Check out the layout. Yeah, looking pretty cool. It's another art image of a Lexington on a clock tower or something there. And yeah, there's our figure and card. Um, wow, he's pretty small. Wow, I forgot how small he was compared to Goliath and the other gargoyles. Look at that. And now here's a look with Lexington at a card. Um, yeah, it was all accessories and stuff. Interesting looking gargoyle. He's definitely the smallest one. But to be fair, that's how he was in the show from what I remember. He has that web wing design going back to like Flying Squirrel. Pretty cool parts. Headset, you know, the crossbow, the... the remote control i don't remember what he uses for i know he was like your tech expert from what i remember in the show and he was fascinated with modern technology um i, I rewatched a couple of them i did see him in some of those episodes and i remember seeing him with a headset i don't remember seeing him with this remote control i'll have to go back and watch more but yeah it's pretty cool what NECA gives you with this figure so taking a closer look at lexington with the head sculpt pretty cool very filmation inspired um like it was in the show and that show was pretty dark for the time still holds up well you know just the uh type of animation it had but it blends in well uh NECA did a pretty good job with the you, know, you can see the way the eyes are done <laughs> really big and a little bit goofy looking you know but um it works for this type of figure it does have a couple f little fangs in there in the mouth that look like they're i don't know if they're sculpted or just painted on it's like maybe little sculpts of paint the mouth is obviously closed it doesn't have uh yeah it's not articulate open like the you know the um alternate one which we'll put on soon as far as the articulation with this head, so let's see, you can go spin really tight, left to right, all the way this way. Adam, ears are really sharp. You got to watch these too. This is like a hard place. I can see these snapping. We're just feeling them. Um, you can look down about that far and all the way up, okay? So yeah, you can see the sculpting in the ears. And yeah, the head itself is pretty hard, I guess, but the ears just use caution with those. So moving down to the chest and ab area now, yeah, it's all... All right, we got to get into this wing design because it's all kind of works together. Uh, I love the paint on this figure too. All, all the gargoyles, I like something with that green. And so it's like, um, yeah, a dull green color with like almost an olive. I don't say, yeah, maybe olive drab, but a lot lighter. Has some type of wash in it too all over. Um, as far as the, so let's see, the ab. So he can go, okay, so of course he has an ab crunch. He can go forward, you know, about that far forward and back. So he can spin at the waist, he can spin at the ab. Um, so all right, let's get into the wing for a minute. Because every time I move something, it, it's really this wing. It's all hindered with this wing design. So right, where do we start here? <laughs> so to, let's move to the arms for a second. Now, I already pre-posed the arms up as far as I can get them. Mine are really tight out of package. Got to be careful with this figure because I can see jo joint breaking or something heated up. So like this, my articulation stuck inside the... Um, Shoulder where I should be able to go in and out. It's, it looks like it's painted stuck. I'll work on that. Where this one, how's that one? Yeah, that's stuck too. Okay, I'm gonna leave that for a minute. But I can obviously rotate the shoulder all the way up and down like this, both of them. So that's working pretty good. So you should be able to go out, but yeah, I can't with that articulation right now. Um, it does have a bicep swivel, has double hinge, you know, hinge elbow joint there. It can bend all the way up to the face, all right? Both sides. Let me see. How's the side? Can that move? It's yeah, okay, so it does, bend. again, be careful. Um, it's just paint stuff and the plastic's getting stuck. But it is important for how you want to position a wing. That's why not only am I showing you articulation, but how it's going to work with the wing. Now, going back to the arms, you can see this um, 
wing is it's plugged and glued into the forearm, right? The front part of the wing on both sides. So if you wanted to remove it, I guess you could, but you might snap it. Um, yeah, I think I see some glue in there on mine. Not meant to come off, but you can, it is possible. So spinning him around, I take a look at the back, see all the muscle statics once again. Yeah, I can't get my shoulder to go up on both sides, but you can see the, the joint, the hinge joints in there. Let me try a little bit here. I can get this one to move, this one's stuck. Okay, I'm not going to mess with that right now, <laughs> but they can go up. If anything, it's not going to do much with the wing aside, move it up this way. To really go all the way up with it, you want to kind of spin the shoulder forward and straighten your arms up. That's how you're going to get the wing to its peak position, open like he's flying. So taking a look at that, okay, so once again, we know it's plugged into the forearm. You can take a look at the, just look at the wing on the left side for now. Um, Yeah, it does have these other, um, you know, arm pieces that are insect kind of pieces that are these are sculpted into the wing and let's see so them them too they're on a little hinge joint they can and yeah, mine's stuck there too it can rotate these can pop out but i don't see no point because you can't take the wing off unless you're going to break the glue and you want to customize it but it and this is really soft too it's all it's all rubber the, um, it is a cool design as far as the wing. I like the sculpting in there. So obviously it are just uh, molded in the flat brown color, I want to say. And once again, going back to this insect appendage, we'll call it, that's tied into the wing. It's all part of sculpt, but it's painted different from the wing, you know. Right, and there's the inside. So it's white on the end, flipping around for a second. Sorry if I'm being confusing. It's just, there's a lot going on here. But it's simple, but there's a lot you got to look at. Um, okay, so these are real soft too, the little points coming off. You can see how it, again, once, how it's all part of the wing, but painted different. So spinning it back around again, still focus on the wing. And then the last, the other part of it is plugged in and glued, right? Yep. To the thigh of the leg, both wings. So it's basically connected to the forearm. It's connected with this piece in the back that does articulate, goes in and out a little bit and can come out if you wanted to, but I'm not going to mess with it. And then the leg. Right, and both sides are exactly the same. Um, yeah, that's pretty much a wing design. So, of course, with the arms down, the wing is going to be folded like that. You can say, well, so, you know, that's going to be the overall look of it. And to spread it out, like he's flying. So, yeah, like I said earlier, you, you, best way I found is bring the arms all the way up and out like this. And then you can position the hands. The hands, too, are on little hinge joints, right? So he comes with a pair of open claw hands and then some spare ones which i'll show soon and of course these can spin and they have hinge joints that can go in and out on both sides all right so moving down from the wings we know how the wings for the most part operate and uh so we know he twists at the waist but again twisting you can only twist so far you know because it's going to be hindered by each side of the wing that's attached to the legs here and everything so yeah everything is just uh it is going to be effect as far as the arms the torso because how the wings attached to everything, you know, um, and you're only going to articulate articulate them so far anyway. So moving down, right? Call this his loin cloth. Uh, looks like it was a pair of jeans at one time that he uh, yeah turned into some shorts or loin protector cloth. Got a cool belt sculpted around there with a buckle. Looks like it's all part of the same sculpt, but just painted different. The belt anyway. I don't think it's a separate piece. No, it's just painted around this um, whole loin <laughs> pair of jeans. Got a little piece here. You can see where those ball joints, as high as the ball joints and the legs, right? So you spin them around. There's the back, same thing. See where it's cut, how it goes all the way around. Now, here's the section of tail. All the gargoyles come with something similar. They have a bendy wire in it, right? It has a little plug here. It does have a hinge joint. And again, mine's stuck with the paint. And you're just pretty much going to plug it into the back there. Just to snap right in like that. So once it's plugged in, you can still spin it, obviously, and it should be all... Okay, there's the hinge joint. So it is going up and down to paint to loosen. And once again, you do have... It's on a bendy wire, which is really cool. It can even help hold him up because he has trouble standing because of his legs. Depending on how you position the toes and stuff, you know. Um, it's funny the little air vent holes they have in the tail here, though. You know, it looks... Uh, that's just on a bottom. So, okay, if we spin this around, we'll say just the smooth part. That will be the top. You won't see those. So aside from the tail, moving down to the legs now... Yeah, he has um, very pre-posed legs in a kind of a hunched position like some of the, a lot of the gargoyles. So that too, as far as the articulation because of how the wing is attached in the back, see how far he So he can go out about that far. I mean, that's cool for what he's doing. You know, you don't have to 
go too crazy. And well, okay, that's just that's as far as articulation allows anyway in the ball joints, but say like that. And all right, so the wings are they fold in, they're not a problem as far as that. Um, so it's more or less a split. And then you can kind of kick forward somewhat. Again, the wing allows for that, so it's not a big deal, but he does have that hunch in the knee, so you're only gonna go so far with a front kick. You can only straighten straighten the leg out so far. Yeah, I love the muscle aesthetics in the leg. Um, and you can see, so it's bent in the knee. You know, has that curve. And as far as see so articulation down at the knees. So obviously, as I said, it has this bone. Yeah, it's curved there, so it can only go so far forward. Um, so that's pretty much always straight. And you can bend about that far, both legs, back. So if you want to hang him or put him in a flying position, it will look like that. Looks like it has a single joint there. And you can also spin at the knee on both sides. Um, then he's got the bit, these big feet here, so they can go up and down. Oh, mine. Let's see. Yeah, you got to be careful with these. Some joints are really stuck. Yeah. Maybe that far forward and back. That's about it. I think it can go, it can go more. It's just stuck. I don't want to mess with it. You can also spin a little bit at that joint. And then, so you have that toe in the back. That's or, or, all part of the sculpt. <clears throat> Excuse me. I have a cold in my throat. And um, as far as the foot, you do have a toe, articu toe articulation. You go about that far and down. The toes are all one piece. And it's the same on both sides as the feet. So before we get into accessories, once again, there's Lexington standing up now. I'm keep the arms posed something like this. I had to use the tail to stand them up because it's, uh, yeah, he's having a hard time standing. It just depends how you balance them. Uh, oh, once again, too, the legs do go all the way back. I mean, I know the knee's bent, but you can kind of skip over that. So just for flying pose, it looks pretty cool. But I want to also just show that messing around with them, you can see this on this turntable. Go all the paint. All these little flakes are all the paint chipping off this figure around the joints, you know. So as far as accessories, Lexington comes with this headset, which I remember seeing before on his head in the show. I think it was using it for communication, obviously. Then it looks like it's just going to go on his head like this. And it could fit either head, but this is just like the more friendly face, right? It's Okay, so it plugs in like that, and you can see the, the um, microphone going to the mouth. So moving on to his next accessory, of course, he comes with the uh, battle-ready face or head. I this is I love these heads on these gargoyles when the eyes go white and the mouths are open. This is usually the heads I display a lot of the figures with. So he does come with that awesome detail. You can see the way to now the mouth isn't articulated, but it's fully sculpted open. You even have tongue sculpt in there, the teeth. And once again, how the eyes are done. That's just incredible. So going back to the head change out, let's take this headset off so we don't break it. Pop this head off that ball peg. So there's your had a ball peg set up. And then we'll put this alternative head on. Just snap on like this. Now here's a look at that head on Lexington's body, battle ready face. And as far as the articulation, right? Spin left to right and go down all the way forward and back. And yeah, I don't think you would use this headset. I mean, I guess you can. It's uh I don't know why we'd use it in that mode, but it, it still does fit if you want to put it on that head. So now here's a look with Lexington with the battle ready head, wings, arms open like he's flying. I just put him on a Kaiser stand just to kind of hold him. They do make different articulated stands to make action figures um look like they're flying. I have some in the background. They're usually clear. This is just a quick rig. You think they would come, you know, give you a good stand, pose them flying. I guess you can always hang them with strings or something, or you got to buy your own, but that looks awesome. So moving on next, as far as accessories, he comes with a couple different pair of hands. So you get two pair, your left and right punching fist, and then it looks like semi gripping hands also for the left and right side. So I'm going to change out these uh, open hands with the semi gripping hands, right? So let's pop the side out see how that peg wow that peg is oh you got to be careful of that so there's your peg and i'll put this one back in the side and then this can also spin and goes in and out and or actually no this one goes up and down on a hinge joint you can see that and then i'll take the left side out put the other gripping hand on that side and that one's also can spin and it's also on a hinge joint that go up and down instead of in and out so for the next accessory it comes with a uh, rc remote controller has a it had a ten of paint in gray. It, it look the way it sculpt looks like it can retract in or out, but it doesn't. It's all one piece. Same thing with the joysticks. They don't move. They're just their own thing. And then with those hands on, pretty much can hold a remote control like that. And I'm trying to, you know, it's something you got to play around with. It the articulation is limited to try to get your finger on like the joystick, so you can hold it. Let's just say with the left hand, how it grips. It's kind of how it shows it on the back of the image on the box. 
And then for his last accessory, accessories, check out that crossbow he comes with. That's really cool. It's got to be the coolest accessory in the pack. It's got metal chain. That's neat. Now, does it... So, it is kind of flexible. I mean, I wouldn't... Yeah, be careful with it. Um, Look at the detail on that. Wow, that's awesome. It's like it's all like wood. It's not, but it's just the way it's painted, the grains in it. Look, just the um, overall bow itself, how it's steel, has spikes on the end. Even has a trigger mechanism here. And then, of course, it comes with three small arrows or bolts, they call them. Those two to really just the detail on them. And it looks like... I don't think this thing could fire. <laughs> it almost looks like it can. So I'm going to say you load it from... Okay, like that. See that? And you can push... You can, it drops down in here. And look at that trigger. It is independent. That'd be cool if it could fire. I don't think it does. <laughs> but that's how your arrow go in. I mean, maybe you can... Let me put all three of them in there, maybe. Eh, maybe one at a time. Okay, here's two. I don't remember in the show if you if you had this or um how it actually operated. So you can okay, you can drop all three arrows. So I don't remember if it can shoot three simultaneously or it was just it could hold three, but it's it's neat you could put all them in there and it holds that. Just the overall design of this. Now here's a look with the crossbow and those two semi-weapon gripping hands. They work best with it. At least that's what it shows once again in a box. And Lexington holding it, and I just left the battle ready head on. Um, so going back to the box, kind of showing you what I'm trying to reference, and it doesn't matter how you do it. So yeah, see with the headset, it actually has a headset remote together. He has that regular filmation face on. Here's once again, here he is flying. I don't see a figure standing under him. I don't know how. <laughs> it's just an image they cut and put in the background. And then here he is holding that crossbow with the hands in a position once again with the head on. You can mix it up, but that's how they have it laid out. So I'm trying to um duplicate and for fun if you wanted to so once again i left the battle ready head on put the headset on that head put the remote in that hand he can still hold the crossbow at one hand so he has all accessories together and then i just drew the first head on with all the accessories um going back to the box art it just seems like with that head when it's not in a battle ready face you know he's just more focused to use technology and um you know technical stuff so moving on to a couple quick comparisons. Of course, here's Goliath. I had the folded wing on him against Lexington. I mean, look at the size of him. It's, it's just, yeah, he's huge and how small he is. So it's kind of those two together. And yeah, I had the fold-out wings put away. I like this folding wing because the problem with these gargoyles, as I said in like earlier, shelf hoggers, when you have the big wings spread out. Now, a lot of my other gargoyles, once I reviewed them, I only reviewed a couple. Most of them are in box. I didn't really know what to do with him, and I like him in box with the art. But Lexington, what's cool with him is that I like that wing design, how small he is, because he's going to fit on your shelf well, and he looks cool for just a gargoyle with the colors and his overall size and design. Now, here's a quick comparison with um, Lexington and Bronx, of course, so you can see those two as far as scale. So I also have Brooklyn in card. Um, yeah, I never reviewed him yet. Maybe well, at some point, it's kind of it's kind of a sort of a size comparison between Lexington and Brooklyn. So you can once again see his size over uh, Lexington's size and what he looks like. You know, um, Brooklyn too looks really cool. I, I can't wait to get to him and just with his head sculpt, the color, the book. But sort of those two together. Once again, he is the smallest gargoyle in the whole series. Okay, so that was my overall review on the new NECA Gargoyles Lexington figure. I really like him. I think he's pretty cool. I like that. Even though he's small, I like something with that size because he's going to work out on my shelf. I'm really fascinated with this overall color. Just something with that green with a gargoyle. Of course, he has, you know, the heads are cool. This one's my favorite, the battle ready one, as I call it. And that's what's going to go on. I love that crossbow. And that's going to stay in hand. That's going to stay in his hands with those hands on, with the head on my shelf. That wing design's pretty neat um it's its own thing and it again it doesn't take up too much room i like the colors on it it is finicky sometimes with articulation but you got to mess around with it some of my joints are getting stuck i can use a blow dryer to fix them and my you know it's cool you get these other accessories i'm probably not going to use them in the hands and stuff um my other only the other issue is just the paint shipping you can see on this turntable but it's not something as it's falling off that's affecting the overall you know body because the body is its own I guess how it comes out of a mold injection machine. It's its own color, but it does have a wash that's different. Of course, the eyes is its own paint, the loincloth. But the chipping's just like overspray or something. It's not affecting nothing. It seems like when it stops, it stops. It's just a factory thing. Not a big deal. Um, you know, the tail's not chipping, nothing like that. Side that's a really cool figure. And I guess my other gripe too is he is expensive, you know, for a neck of figure. I mean, because of his size. He's pretty much the same cost as like what Goliath costs now, depending where you get it, or even Bronx. At least what I paid for him, I, I just, I don't 
I don't think it should be that much for the size of figure and what you're getting. You know, maybe Big Bear Toy Store will have a better deal on him. I got him on eBay, a little, little more pricier, but he's due to be shipping this month from places like Big Bear Toy Store, and I think Neck Online might have him. So I, Dad, I think he's cool. I like him. So I appreciate everybody watching. Until next time, take care.